Today we're going to be looking at Sonoff's latest smart light switch, the Sonoff TX Ultimate. And we're also going to be putting ESP Home on it so that we've got full local control. So taking a closer look, as soon as I pick it up it feels quite sturdy. It's got the branding on the side. This is a three switch version, you can get one, two or three. And looking at the back, it's got neutral, live in, live out, live out, live out, one for each relay. So this switch does need a neutral wire, which is a bit of a shame for some people. I've got a new build house and a lot of them don't have a neutral wire behind the switch, but some of them do. So make sure you take a look behind each one because you might be surprised that some of them actually do have a neutral wire available to you. One thing to be mindful of is, is that the screws are exposed at the back, so you just want to be careful with insulation and if you put it in and take it out of the back box. So the first thing we need to do with this is we need to open it up so that we can flash ESP Home onto it. So I'll just briefly go through how you do it in this video, but there's lots of videos out there on how to flash Sonoff devices and similar devices. So this one is no different really. So once you've opened it up, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to connect your FTDI adapter to the pins that are available. So the 3.3 volt, the ground, the receive and the transmit pins. And also you're going to want to find the pin that says boot, which is actually a little solder pin. And you're going to need to solder a wire from there onto one of the other ground pins. I used ESP tool to flash the firmware. I did have some issues at first. And it seemed to be a problem because I actually had a really old FTDI adapter and I was struggling to get it into bootloader mode. But I bought a new FTDI adapter and as soon as I did that, it worked first time. When I was coming towards the end of creating this video, I actually came across another GitHub page what it looks like someone's been working on recently. And they've actually created a custom component. So this is probably worth checking out. They've got a video as well and they've got lots of information. So I'll leave that in the description so you can take a look. So this is what the device looks like in Home Assistant based on the GitHub. You'll probably want to make some changes to simplify some things. As you can see here, there's quite a lot of entities at the moment. A lot of them are to do with the 28 individually addressable LEDs. And so you might want to simplify that a bit. If you look down here, you can see there's some sensors for the button presses. One thing that I think is quite neat is the touch panel power here. So you can actually disable the touch panel. This might be handy for something like child safe mode or something like that. By default, the LEDs are set so that they're on red, very dim all the time. And then when you press one of the switches, it lights up brighter. Personally, I've removed this code and I've got the LEDs off by default. And then I just turn them on for certain situations like using it for a night light in the bedroom. You can also set different colours and you can also have different lighting effects because the LEDs are individually addressable. It uses the NeoPixel Bus library and so you can use any effects that are in that. The touch panel is supposed to allow some swipe actions but I found that they're not too reliable and sometimes these states stay stuck on so I'm not planning to use these at the moment. So if you look at the code in ESP Home, it's actually fairly simple to understand. So you can see that you've got all the sort of basic settings at the top. You've got some references to the two libraries that have been created from the GitHub. And then you've got the connections to the serial bus, which is used for the buttons. And then you've got basically the different configurations for the buttons. And then down here, you've got the binary sensors. And then here you've got the light entity. So we managed to get most of it working with ESP Home, which is great. We just need someone who's smarter than me to figure out the speaker side of things. And also the gestures need a bit of improvement. Thanks again for the person who shared their GitHub to help me get up and running. I did a lot of troubleshooting myself to try and get as far as I could, but those switches were just too tricky to figure out. But for me, the main thing really is turning the lights on and off and having the lights around the edge of the switch to, as a night light or as an indicator as to whether the switch is on or off. And I think it's great that you can configure that with different themes, different colours. It will be really good for children's bedrooms.
this switch actually does come with the ability to change the front panel as well. There's two different themes at the moment. I've actually ordered them so that I can try them out. I'm sure they'll bring some more covers out over time, but I think it's quite neat, especially fun for children's bedrooms. But the white one suits me just fine. One of the things I really like about this switch, like a lot of the smart light switches, is you can decouple the buttons from the actual relays. So you can actually control turning the lights on and off separately to the buttons and the buttons can do something else. So that's one of the reasons why I often get a three button light switch, even if I only need one or two, because then you can use that for turning scenes on and off for other things. Well that's it for today, so if you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing and liking the video as it will really help the channel grow. And thanks, until next time.